Good morning, everybody. Ian here from Redline. I've had a lot of success here lately with some of the powder coating videos that I've done. Huge view numbers. And I had somebody recently comment on one of my videos and say, Ian, why don't you contrast the Eastwood versus the Harbor Freight powder coating system? And I thought, you know what? That's actually a really good idea. So yesterday on my way home from work, I stopped and I picked up the Harbor Freight powder coating system. I picked up their black as well as their white powder that they offer in the store. And the purpose of this video today is to contrast it and see how does it do against the Eastwood kit. I've had the Eastwood dual voltage kit here for several months now. I've used it several times, pretty familiar with it. I've also got some of their powder in several different shades that, uh, that they offer. And the purpose of this video is we're gonna try and figure out which one's the better system. One of the things I'm hoping to learn today as I try and contrast the Eastwood kit versus the Harbor Freight kit is does the Harbor Freight kit do better where the Eastwood kit does not? And let me explain kind of what I mean by that. A couple of months ago, I powder coated this hang on the wall paper towel rack that was in my garage. I used the Eastwood kit and I noticed something a little funny. If you notice and you have a look right up inside here and you have a good close look, you can see where two pieces of sheet metal join and it leaves an open gap. And it's a small gap, but still when I was, when I was powder coating it using the Eastwood kit, I noticed that the powder didn't really want to get up inside of those nooks and crevices. It would, it did fine as long as you were trying to powder coat something that was a great big open area like this right here but when it came time to get up in the corners and get up in between things it didn't do so hot it left some raw bare steel and i'm kind of curious does the harbor freight kit do the same thing Full disclosure, neither one of these companies, the Harbor Freight nor the Eastwood Company, is sponsoring my YouTube channel. I did reach out to the folks at the Eastwood Company and I asked them to sponsor Project Redline, my 67 Nova build, to send me some of their products I would use in the build and review their products. They declined and so as a result, I just want to make sure everybody knows uh, neither one of these companies is in my pocket. They didn't give me anything. Everything that you're about to see is 100% what I think, so I have absolutely zero cares whether you know the product is a piece of crap or a solid piece of equipment i'm going to tell you how it really is all right so first inspection i have just opened my harbor freight kit for the first time and i'm already noticing some differences the first of which is you control your power with the eastwood gun here using a thumb operated switch whereas on the harbor freight system they give you a foot pedal I could see that that would be kind of handy because you could operate this with your foot and then have use of your other hand to sit there and spin the part and things of that nature. So I have a feeling that's going to be handy. I also noticed that Harbor Freight gives you several different diffusers, three sizes total as well as an extra fuse. You can see right there. What is the diffuser? The diffuser is this little piece on the end of the electrode. And basically what it does is determines whether or not your powder comes out in a straight line or a great big poof. Obviously a great big diffuser diffuser is going to give you a great big poof. Pull the, uh, the diffuser off there completely and you're going to get more of a straight line of powder. With the Eastwood system, they only offer one diffuser size that comes with it. I actually prefer to use this without any diffuser at all and just let it kind of come out in a straight line where I have more control of it. I have also noticed that with the Eastwood system, your reservoir goes on the bottom side of the gun. With the Harbor Freight system, it goes on the top side of the gun. Does that matter? matter? I don't know. The other thing that I have noticed is that the Harbor Freight system comes with a pressure regulator right here tied to the gun from day one. I had to add one of those to my Eastwood gun. That's really important because if you don't have a pressure regulator and you just have a hundred and something PSI coming straight into your gun, you will blow the reservoir right off the bottom of the gun. You've got to have a pressure regulator. So those are my first thoughts of noticing the differences between the two. All right, so I've just learned something here about my little Harbor Freight gun. Um, the regulator on it doesn't work that well. Um, watch what happens here when I plugged it up to air for the first time as I did just a moment ago. Way too much airflow. I can turn it down and I get a, a small airflow there, I hope, but turn it at all, turn it just a little bit. Way too much airflow coming out of this gun. Uh, this is probably not a very good regulator for this thing. When you're spraying powder, you want it to kind of poof out of the end of the gun and, you know, give yourself a nice easy cloud that 
falls onto and attracts onto the part. This is not one of those cases where you're going to fire it out, you know, like a water hose. This is not a more is better kind of thing. You want a small airflow. This regulator, I can tell you right now, um, is not impressive. If I was going to use this gun and keep it, um, I would probably uh, replace this with a quality uh, uh, regulator. And, uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and use it anyway because we are testing the Harbor Freight gun. But in my opinion, that regulator is total crap. Okay, so to get started, I made a couple of sheet metal parts here. Uh, I just sheared up some sheet metal using my shear, put a couple of brakes in there using my brake, and then I used my hole punch to give me some holes for hanging the parts from, as well as so that I could have two different types of welds, an edge weld and then a spot weld like you can see right there. And now that I've got them like this, it's important to mention I did sandblast these parts in their individual form so that they're good and clean up in all the little tiny areas like right there. And now I'm going to go ahead and sandblast them one more time to get the whole part clean. All right, I've finished making my parts. I've given myself some nice little uh, hard spots for the powder to get up into. You'll see that here in a minute. Normally, I just pull these parts right out of the uh, sandblaster and powder coat them. Uh, I don't typically like to wipe them down with a cloth because when parts come out of the sandblaster, they kind of have a rough texture to them and lint from your cloth likes to stick to the part. So this time, I'm going to try uh, spraying any last little bit of oil that might be on this part off with uh, just some carburetor cleaner. Supposedly, you get your best results when you preheat your part, so that's exactly what I'm doing. I've got her in there in uh, bare steel and getting her good and hot. Okay, here we go. First impressions, first time ever with the Harbor Freight gun. Let's see if we can get our airflow right. Whew, my goodness. Trying to get a small amount out of this thing and it's tough. All right, let's try it anyway. I can see it sticking to the part. It's coming out way too much powder. Way too much. Holy crap, this regulator is garbage. I think I'm just going to use the foot pedal here, my hand control. I'm trying to, to, to feather the throttle here because it's just putting out so much powder. So much powder. I can see it glossing over already because the part is hot. Let's get her in the oven. All right, first impressions on that Harbor Freight system. It worked. Um, it put out way too much powder. That regulator is absolute garbage, just as I thought. If I use that thing again here to do another test today, I'm switching that thing out. I ain't trying that again. It's just, suppose a minute, you know, you went to like an airbrush shop and you were going to get a t-shirt made, and instead of the guy pulling out the little gun that goes tss, 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 he instead pulls out like an industrial house painter that he's picked up from uh, Lowe's, you know, going to do the side of your house. That's pretty much what that was like. Um, look at the amount of powder that is all over the floor. I turned on the air conditioner in here to try and get the, the cloud out of the room, hopefully getting absorbed into my filters over there. So uh, I got the part in the oven, 400 degrees, and uh, here in just a minute, we're going to see how she looks. Okay, so full disclosure, I may have screwed that up a little bit. I realized after I got my part into my oven over there, have a look at this. My alligator clamp, I never hooked it up. Um, so the whole electrostatic, you know, <clears throat> charge thing that draws the powder to the part, it never happened apparently. However, here's the funny thing. The powder stuck to the part really, really well. Like I've powder coated a decent number of parts and I know what it looks like when it, when it adheres to it and it adhered. I have a feeling that was because I preheated the part, the part was at 400 degrees, and so I think that as soon as the powder touched the part, it probably just instantly melted and stuck to it. And I say this because the piece of steel that I used to hang the part from was not uh, sandblasted, not sprayed off with um, carburetor cleaner, and it was not preheated, and you notice that, uh, you know, it didn't really stick to it, obviously. It certainly didn't melt to it. So I find it really odd that I <laughs> have kind of circumvented the process of electrostatically charging the particles 
just by preheating it. So what it does help do for me is it drives home the importance of preheating. So I'm going to wait, see what the part looks like when it comes out of the oven, and then, uh, you know, from there kind of make a determination if I'm going to repeat this test or not. We'll see. All right, having a look at the first part that uh, came off of the Hubber Freight system. Uh, just came out of the oven, and to be honest with you, it doesn't look bad. Now granted, this is not a gloss finish powder, this is matte powder, so you certainly can't judge it based on, uh, on the gloss of it. The one thing that I do notice is that the powder seems to be smoother in some spots, and in other spots, you know, it has kind of a, a rough texture to it. You can kind of see right across there. You can see it back over on this back left hand corner as well right kind of up in there so looks okay I wouldn't call it professional grade but um, it's not bad okay so I've got a little test here that I want to try with this Harbor Freight system uh, part of the way that you you know measure the effectiveness of a powder coating system is you try and do a top coat um, you know if you're doing candies that's going to require two color coats if you're doing uh, plenty of other certain types of powders you've got to have a clear coat on top or sometimes people just do clears because they want it to be you know more durable so I'm gonna try and do a second coat over this part right here um, I'm gonna use a, uh, a a real regulator this time that'll hopefully get our our spray down to something that is manageable. I'm going to switch out the color from the Harbor, Harbor Freight Black to the Harbor Freight White so we can see exactly how well it kind of sticks to it. Obviously I'm going to put my my alligator clamp in place this time. I will preheat the part again so uh, when I start shooting it will be uh, coming right out of the oven and we're going to see what we got. All right let's try some white over black and see what happens. Alrighty, we got our white part in there. We have put white over black. So if it doesn't cover, you damn sure ought to be able to see it. 400 for a half an hour. Okay, here we go. First impressions of the part done with the Harbor Freight kit. This thing was preheated. We did black and then uh, did white over black. And there's what we got. The white was a gloss finish. Looks like I didn't do quite a good enough job of getting the powder on the bottom of it, but I did on the top side. It's a pretty good looking finish, to be honest with you. I'm pretty happy with it. It's very consistent, nice and smooth. It's smoother than the, uh, than the black finish was. As I look down inside there, I can see, I'm sure you probably struggle to see that, but I can see where you know, the powder kind of struggled to get down in that gap, which was the purpose of uh, making that gap. This piece here, it did uh, very well going all the way around it. It didn't have any trouble coating the welds. In the past with the Eastwood kit, I've ran into issues where getting the powder to cover the welds was a problem. And for some reason, you know, the, the powder would sometimes stick perfectly to the part and then just gloss right over the weld and then stick again over here. And I've not been terribly sure why, but um, this one did not seem to have that problem at all. I'm not sure here if the powder didn't stick to the bottom of it so well because gravity was helping me do the job here. I kind of suspect that, but I don't know it. Um, overall, it's, uh, it's not bad. All right, now I'm going to try out my Eastwood kit. I've got my dual voltage set as high as it will go. Let's see how it does. All right, so I can immediately notice it's a much more controlled stream or cloud, if you will, than what I had with the Harbor Freight system. Just completely different in that regard. I'm having a hard time getting it to flow up in that corner there. So I'm going to pull my diffuser off here. Let's we'll see if that helps us. Oh, yeah. Yeah, much more successful trying to get the the powder to flow up in those uh, those crevices there. A completely different ball game in terms of the flow of the powder. Much more professional. Will it give us a better finished product? That I don't know. Let's put that in the uh, in the oven and see how she does. 
Okay, our Eastwood part came out really, really nice. Everything covered super well. I've just pulled it straight out of the oven. It's done baking, and while it's hot, I'm gonna go ahead and shoot a top coat of red onto it, and let's see how it does putting a coat on top of a coat with the Eastwood system. Again, I almost forgot, gotta hook up my alligator clamp. Little too much airflow there. Okay, I kept having to adjust the air and through my regulator, but I finally got the flow right. I got the, co the part coated good. I'm not too sure about the bottom side. I did everything I could to get as much powder on the bottom of it as possible, especially after seeing what happened with the, uh, the Harbor Freight system. So uh, let's stick it in the oven. I'm just going to go ahead and check and make sure that my parts are getting good and hot in my oven. 425, 384. Looks good. I want to show you guys something while I'm waiting on my parts to cure. One of the things I noticed about the Harbor Freight kit that I really prefer over the Eastwood kit is the length of the cords. Notice how the Harbor Freight kit gives you about three foot more cord than the Eastwood kit does. You wouldn't think it, but that three feet actually makes a pretty big difference because when you're trying to circle a part, particularly if it's a good size part, and you're pulling on those cords and they're pulling up and they're trying to bump into your part and things of that nature, having some extra cord length makes a pretty big difference. You wouldn't think it, but it does. Kudos to Harbor Freight for some extra cord length. Thank you. All right, moment of truth. This is the Eastwood part after applying red over black. Let's see how it looks. Oh, wow. Looks fantastic. Just professional grade all day. All right, so my part has cooled down. Let's cut our uh, wires and just have a look at what we've got here on our dual coated part from the Eastwood company. The wires stuck to it pretty good right there. No surprise. Wow. The finish is just as professional as professional could be. Uh, it's just so smooth. There is a little bit of trash in it right here that appears to be just a few specks of uh, black, but I believe that that fell onto the part from the, the piece of steel that was holding this, so I don't hold that against it. Boy, it just makes all the welds and everything just look so good. Let's have a look down inside this channel here. And I know, again, it's tough for you guys to see, but I can see it. The powder got down inside this channel uh, better than it did on the, uh, the Harbor Freight part, no doubt. Really smooth. I don't see any place that the powder did not get up into. It, uh, it just looks great. All right, in comparing my Eastwood part to my Harbor Freight part, there's no doubt that the, the Eastwood powder is a glossier, smoother powder than the Harbor Freight powder. Uh, that much I can see. You guys may not be able to see it that well, but I can. Uh, let's check it out and see what kind of durability we've got out of this stuff. All right, I'm pushing pretty hard there with that screwdriver, and it's not doing much. All right, let's check this part. Mm, it's about the same thing, really, to be honest. It's, uh, I think the white on the Harbor Freight stuff is probably coming up a little easier. Yeah, let's see whether or not a wire brush does anything at all. Okay, so the wire brush scratched up both of them pretty good. You know, I think my screwdriver test, I think the Eastwood powder probably did a little bit better than the Harbor Freight powder in terms of durability, but we're really splitting hairs here, if I'm being totally honest. Uh, there's no doubt that the Eastwood powder, in my eyes, is uh, superior to that of the Harbor Freight powder. Um, not by anything drastic, but I mean, it's, it's measurable and I can see it. Okay, so in one of the first videos that I ever did, I tested the Eastwood system. I did it on cold parts that were not preheated, as this one is not. I had my alligator clamp hooked up, and I found that the Eastwood system, the powder drew to the part quite well, 
And uh, given that earlier I forgot to hook up the alligator clamp on the Hubbard Freight System, I decided I would go ahead and do another random part in order to give the Harbor Freight System its due diligence. So I uh, got a clean part here, got it plugged up, let's see what happens. If we're being totally honest here, I did take my diffuser off of my Harbor Freight gun. I really prefer these things without them. Alright, the Harbor Freight gun covered the part quite well. I was really happy with it. Having the right airflow makes all the difference in the world and uh, just causes the powder to come out so much better. But uh, coverage looks good. Let's bake it and see what we got. All right, I shot some white using my uh, Harbor Freight gun there and I'm now using my infrared heat lamp to cure the part. People always want to know in these videos, where did I get this infrared heat lamp from? Just go to eBay, run a search for infrared paint heat lamp. There are a bunch of these things on there. Let's just check the heat on our Harbor Freight part. Make sure we're getting enough heat in this thing. 336, 340, 329, 345. Not bad. I want to take just a quick minute to try out some of the settings on our Harbor Freight gun. Down here underneath it, we've got a regulating valve that we can turn that uh, will change the amount of powder they say that comes out of the gun. Let's see what it does. All right, I'm going to close it up by spinning it counterclockwise quite a good bit there. Looks pretty good. Okay, let's open it up a whole bunch now, spinning it counterclockwise. Honestly, I'm not really noticing much difference between the two. All right, I've got my biggest diffuser installed on the end of the Harbor Freight gun. Let's see what that does. It's a nice big open path of powder. Seems to work pretty well. All right, now I've installed our medium sized diffuser. Let's see what we got. Maybe a little bit more narrow, but nothing huge. And lastly, I've got my smallest diffuser they make. It's definitely a more narrowed path as I get smaller on my diffuser. There's no doubt about that. All right, so I've got my part here that I did with the Harbor Freight system using Harbor Freight powder. And um, I don't know if you guys can see this. I can. It's not a super uniform finish. Can you see that? It uh, didn't cover that well. It's not very thick built up on the part, despite the fact that I sprayed a metric ton of powder on this thing, trying to make sure that it was really thick. Um, it also stands to note that, you know, I had trouble getting the white on the bottom of this part here and covering over that black. However, when I did it with the Eastwood system and Eastwood powder, it covered the bottom extremely well. It built up super thick and turned into just this beautiful gloss finish. So at the end of the day, there's no question that I prefer the Eastwood system. Um, their powders seem to be a little bit better. I had an easier time controlling the flow out of their gun. Sometimes I felt like the, uh, the Harbor Freight system was not a steady stream. It was like a, pu -pu 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 -pu, you know, kind of flow, if you will. So I was happier with the coverage on the, uh, the Eastwood system. It definitely did better trying to put one layer on top of another. That's not to say that there weren't things that I didn't like about the Harbor Freight system. I like the longer cords. I like having extra diffusers. That stuff is great, but at the end of the day, you know, going from, what was it, 70 to 115 bucks, in my opinion, it's $45 well spent. Hope you guys enjoy these videos and find them helpful. It's a lot of work to come out here in the shop and spend all day filming this stuff, so I, I hope everybody appreciates it. If you want to make sure that you don't miss videos from me, be sure to click the subscribe button and turn on notifications so that when I push a new video out there, you don't miss it. I would also ask as a favor to me that you click the thumbs up down below. That lets YouTube know that this is a quality video and to give it be better rankings up their list. So. That's the review for today. Eastwood wins. Hope y'all uh, enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a good one.